In this video, we're going to apply Routes Law to fractional distillation to understand how we can separate liquids that have very, very similar boiling points. So if you recall, fractionated, fractional distillation requires one of these fractionating columns. It's generally packed with glass beads or something similar. And then we put our mixture down in here and then heat it up. Now, uh, one thing we're going to want to keep in mind is that the fractionating column is going to be hotter down here and it's going to be cooler up here and that's just because of the distance away it is from the uh, heat source. So as we're kind of heating it up, we're going to um, get the vapor rising and then um, it will sort of settle back down as it condenses and stop on some of these glass beads. And depending how volatile a, a substance is, it's going to um, either go further up or not go as far up if it's a lot less volatile. So let's then look at one of these boiling composition curves and understand, okay, what is actually going on in fractional distillation? So fractional distillation is going to be multiple times where the vapor is going to get heated up and then cooled back down and condensed and, and form on those beads. So if we were to start with a solution that had 0.1 mole fractions of A and 0.9 mole fractions of B, and we were trying to separate the two, we need to keep in mind in this particular curve here, uh, B is less volatile than A, but if we see the boiling points are pretty similar, right? They're only about 20 odd degrees separated from each other. So we need these multiple evap evaporations and condensation processes happening in order to separate the two things. So if we started with this ratio of 0.1 mole fraction of A and 0.9 of B, and we were to heat it up, if we come up to our liquid curve, uh, that would have a boiling point of 87 degrees. And that tells us if we go to the vapor curve that the composition of our vapor is 0.3 of A and 0.7 of B. So not very purified from each other. Um, so that's going to trickle back down the column a little bit and then get heated again. So let's maybe do a different color here. If we were to heat this mole fraction up again now and look at the liquid curve, it's actually boiling now at 81 degrees. So it takes a little bit less um, in terms of the temperature. If we were to follow that over to the vapor curve, then our vapor is made up of 0.6a and 0.4b. So we've jumped up from 0.3 to 0.6a and we jumped down in B. So it's a little bit more pure in A. Now if we were to take this again, so that's trickling back down a little bit, condensing, and then we were to boil this mole fraction now, that's happening at 74 degrees Celsius, and the vapor is now composed of about 0.85A and 0.15B. So it's become even more pure in A. And we can keep doing this, right? So if we then reheat this vapor after it's condensed, it's going to boil around 70 degrees and its vapor is going to consist of, you know, around 0.95A and only 0.05B. So multiple times of doing this heating and condensing through our fractional distillation column is going to help us eventually purify it so that we only get A coming out and condensing through our column and helps us to be able to separate it from B um, through these multiple heating and condensing because if we only did it the once, we'd have a pretty impure substance. So we need this multiple heating and cooling cycles in order to purify and create a substance that is relatively pure. So that is how fractional distillation works. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.